Good morning and welcome New Mount Zion Church family and visitors to another Sunday School lesson from the Cross Comprehensive Review of Sacred Scripture as approved by the National Baptist Convention of America Press. Let us pray. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. For your name is worthy of all praise and all the glory belongs to you. We come before your holy presence in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord God, we come to thank you for all of your blessings, your grace and your mercy. And we just want to give you thanks, Father, for all of your goodness towards us. Thank you, Father, for commending your love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we come this day, Lord God, to just thank you, Father, for this salvation that we have by faith in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to study your word this day, we ask that you would forgive us of any sin, anything that would hinder us from having fellowship with you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word that is about to go forth in our lesson today. And as your word goes forth, Lord God, I pray that we will respond in obedience to your will so that the name of Jesus will be exalted, so that the name of Jesus would be praised. Lord God, we thank you, O Father, for the man of God that you have placed at this church, and we pray that you will give him wisdom, understanding, and Lord God, that you would strengthen him as he would lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will bless his family and every member of our church family with all the blessings that we stand in need of. And we pray, Heavenly Father, your blessing on the body of Christ as a whole. Lord God, we love you. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we pray. Amen. The date is June the 20th in the year 2021. To our visitors, our pastor, Reverend Larry L. Roundtree II, welcomes you to the New Mount Zion Church family, where we are, with God's grace, changing the world through the love of Christ, one soul at a time. The theme for our current quarter is, We Are the Body of Christ. I am Deacon Keith Poe, and I will be serving as the facilitator for today's lesson. And he, that is to say Christ, is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians, the first chapter, verses 18 and 19. Today's lesson scripture, Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 18 through 26. The lesson focus, reach out to Jesus for new life. Our theme talk for the day. As we observe Father's Day today, some of us come to that celebration with mixed emotions or wounds in need of tender care. Satan has waged war for centuries against the hearts and minds of our young men, stealing them away from the family structure of our heritage. But our eternal Father holds up a heavenly vision of his desire for a paradigm shift in relationships. In the context of the body of Christ, there is to be a unity that promotes healing and a practical, functional love that mentors by example. This week's lessons encourage us in our Father's careful instructions on how to do life well. Everything from managing resources to confession 
and forgiveness, meditating on God's word, the power of prayer and leadership are covered as part of his overarching plan to build up the body and restore the family. Christ, the head of the body, brings reconciliation and healing because it pleased our Heavenly Father to have all his fullness dwell in him. Praise God for his Father's Day gift to each of us. We are in Unit 1, where Jesus teaches about faith, with Lesson 3, Healed by Faith. Let us begin our lesson. A Frantic Parent Jairus, one of the chief rulers in the synagogue, humbled himself before Jesus. As Jairus worshipped the Master, he also requested his help. Jairus' only daughter had died, but Jairus believed Jesus could restore her. Jesus, his disciples, and several followers immediately headed toward Jairus' home. However, along the way, a woman suffering from a severe illness came up behind the Savior, also seeking healing. Both Jairus and the woman believed in and found Jesus' life-giving power. A Suffering Woman This woman suffered from a disease that caused bleeding. She reached out to Jesus. Even though, as an unclean woman, she should not have done that, her situation dictated isolation from the public. Jewish law declared her ceremonially unclean, unfit to stand in the presence of a priest or religious leader. Leviticus, the 15th chapter, verse 26. Yet she believed if she only touched Jesus' flowing garment or robe, she'd be delivered and made whole. That's precisely what happened. The sick woman touched his garment and he healed her. Jesus turned, saw the woman, and spoke kindly to her. There was no need to be afraid, Jesus told her. He acknowledged her as a daughter and commended her faith in him. A healed daughter. Jesus continued to Jairus' house. The professional team of mourners had already gathered, and Jesus told them to leave the child's room. They laughed when Jesus said the girl was not dead, only asleep. But once everyone cleared the room, Jesus took the deceased little girl by the hand and restored her life. Every person on this earth is dead in his or her trespasses and sin. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 1. On our own, we have no hope nor the possibility of deliverance from our sins. However, the Father sent his son, Jesus, to be the life-giving source. He's ready to save those who choose to reach out to him. Section 1 of our study is Life Need and is intended for small group discussion. We are asked to discuss the blessings that occur when reaching out to Jesus. After reading the narrative in the student book, Healed by Faith, describe a time when you reached out to Jesus and he blessed your life. Here we have an opportunity to relate a wide range of ways 
by which Jesus has blessed us when we have reached out to him. Blessings might include physical and or emotional healing, supportive friendships, a cleansing of personal guilt and shame, and most significantly, a redeemed relationship with the Lord. Question 2. Do you tend to reach out to Christ more when your life is going well or not going well? Question 2 encourages us to examine why we normally reach out to Christ. On the one hand, deep anxiety or overwhelming fears might compel us to seek Christ. On the other hand, Christ's selfless love and compassionate character might attract us to him. People's circumstances vary considerably, but what is important to remember is that Christ will receive us under any circumstances or in any situation. Question 3. When you reach out to the Lord, how does he transform your life? For question three, one way is the way he transforms believers' minds so that they have a desire to learn from his holy word and focus on God's truth when they make decisions. Another way is his ability to transform believers' hearts so that they desire to help others while feeling compassion for them. Section 2 of our study is Bible Learning. Study Jesus' healing of an ill woman and Jairus' daughter. In the first century, women were generally held in low esteem. Many men would not speak to a woman on the street especially if her character was questionable. A prayer from the rabbis would actually thank God that they had not been born female. In contrast, Jesus talked openly with women. John the fourth chapter, verse 7 through 26. He ministered to their needs and involved them in the work he was doing. Luke the seventh chapter, verses 11 through 15, the eighth chapter, verse 1 through 3, and the tenth chapter, verse 38 through 42. Moreover, in that culture, older people were revered. While godly parents loved their children, the parents often considered their sons and daughters to be of lesser value than adults. Regrettably, some even considered daughters to be a disadvantage. In contrast, Jesus welcomed boys and girls. He healed and blessed them and cited their trustfulness as an example for adults. The synagogue leaders request. Our lesson scripture will begin in the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 18 and 19, from the King James Version. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, my daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Verse 19. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Jesus' fame as a marvelous healer has spread among the Jewish people after he healed several people in Capernaum and around Galilee. Matthew the 8th chapter verses 1 through 17 and the 9th chapter verses 1 through 8. 
This fame had captured the attention of a synagogue leader and father of a young girl who was deathly ill. While our lesson text, Matthew the ninth chapter, verses 18 and 19, does not name this synagogue leader, longer parallel accounts in Mark and Luke tell us that the leader's name was Jairus. In Matthew's abbreviated account of the healing, this religious ruler had such a profound faith in Jesus that he knelt before the Lord and declared that Jesus could restore his daughter to life if he would come to his home and touch her. In response to Jairus' plea and confession, Jesus and his disciples Follow the ruler to his house. Question 4. What prompted the religious official to come to Jesus for help? Jairus had a daughter who was as good as dead due to a terminal illness. The father was desperate to find some way to rescue his daughter from her terrible plight so he turned to the Savior for help. Question 5. How did Jesus respond to the religious officials' request? Jesus could have responded by minimizing, dismissing, or rejecting the synagogue leader's request. Instead, Jesus heard an anguished parent turned to him in faith to rescue the girl. Apparently, without hesitation, Jesus and the twelve went with the religious leader. The Jewish synagogue was one of several cultural institutions in Palestine during the first century A.D. The underlying Greek word means a congregation or an assembly. The synagogue was a place of prayer and instruction in the scriptures. The synagogue possibly originated in the time of Ezra. It might be referenced in Psalm 74 verse 8, which is literally rendered the meeting places of God, in which the King James Version translates, the synagogues of God. Jairus, as one of the local synagogue leaders, would have been responsible for the upkeep of the building. He also oversaw the physical arrangements of the Sabbath services. This included choosing who would pray as well as those who would read from the Hebrew scriptures. The Healing of a Hemorrhaging Woman Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 20 through 22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Verse 22 But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Another person who was desperate for Jesus' merciful aid was a woman who had suffered from a bleeding affliction for a dozen agonizing years. Unable to catch the Lord's attention with words, she pushed her way 
through a throng of people and touched Jesus' robe, believing that such an action would heal her. Perceiving both her touch and her faith, Jesus faced her and told her that her faith in him had healed her. In that fateful moment, the woman was healed. Question 6. Why did the woman approach Jesus? For 12 years, this woman had endured the plight of constant bleeding, probably some kind of hemorrhaging. She convinced herself that if she could just touch Jesus' robe, her physical condition would be healed. This belief then became the basis for her approaching Jesus. Question 7. What response from Jesus did the woman receive? Far from being rebuked, the woman experienced Jesus' mercy and compassion. He referred to her as daughter and encouraged her to take heart. In brief, the woman received an affirming healing response from Jesus. Scripture presents God as the divine healer. Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verse 25. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verse 39. Psalm 41, verses 3 and 4. The Old Testament prophets, as God's representatives, were used by him to predict sickness and death. This was true of Nathan, 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, verse 14. Ahijah, 1 Kings, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Elijah, 2 Kings, the 1st chapter, verse 4. And Elisha, the 5th chapter, verse 27, the 8th chapter, verse 10. The prophets also intervene to bring about the healing of such people as the son of of the Zarephath widow, 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 19 through 23. The son of the Shunammite, 2 Kings, the 4th chapter, verses 18 through 37. Naaman, the 5th chapter, verses 3 through 14. And Hezekiah, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 7. In Jesus' day, many diseases and infirmities plagued people. Also, ill individuals selected treatments from whatever was available. These sources included a number of healing cults and their shrines, various magical potions, spells, amulets, and sacred inscriptions. With many diseases as few reliable cures, it should come as no surprise that all four Gospels are filled with accounts of afflicted people coming to Jesus and his curing them. He saw people as body-spirit complexes. Furthermore, he expressed a deep concern for the sick, disabled, and oppressed. Luke, the fourth chapter, in the 18th verse, and see also Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verse 1. The Restoration of a dead girl to life. Matthew, the ninth chapter, 
verses 23 through 26. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Verse 26. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. When Jesus and Jairus arrived at the ruler's home, Jesus entered the house, loud with pipe or flute players and a large gathering of mourners. Immediately, the Lord ordered the crowd to leave the room, and moreover, he declared that Jairus' daughter was asleep and not dead. The visitors laughed at Jesus for making such a preposterous statement, but then were forced outside. With the disbelievers absent from his presence, Jesus went to the girl and grasped her by the hand. Jairus' daughter then awoke and got up to the amazement of all who were present. With such amazement rapidly circulating among the people throughout the region. Question 8 What did Jesus do with the crowd of lamenters he encountered? Jesus could see that a throng of professional mourners was congregating at the synagogue official's house. Yet Jesus did not let the commotion distract him. Instead, the Savior abruptly commanded these noisy individuals to leave. Question 9. How did Jesus restore the girl to life? Jesus, after he drove the professional mourners from the house, simply walked into the room where the girl lay, grasped her hand, and she was immediately restored to life. At ancient Middle Eastern funerals, it was common for mourners to express their grief loudly. In fact, culture at that time expected such clamorous utterance and depending on the wealth of the attending family, professional wailers were even hired for such occasions. Moreover, music was commonly used to enhance such expressions of grief. One instrument that was often used at funerals was the pipe or flute which is one of the oldest musical instruments that is still in use. This simple wind instrument is called a neigh or neigh. In fact, the neigh is seen on wall paintings in the Egyptian pyramids, thus dating it as far back as four to five millennia. It was made of a hollow cane or reed with five or six finger holes. Jesus performed many miracles during his earthly ministry, some of which are not recorded in the Gospels. John the 20th chapter, verse 30, the 21st chapter, verse 25. When Jesus brought about a work of power, he directly intervened to counteract some established pattern in the natural order. The implication is that his miracles were extraordinary 
displays of his supreme control over creation. Jesus did not intend his miracles to bring him fame and fortune. Instead, they confirmed his claim to be the Messiah. His works of power also validated his assertion that he was sent by God and represented him. Regardless of the miracle Jesus carried out, it proved the credibility of the truths he declared. People could see that Jesus was willing to reach out to people with compassion and grace, as well as encourage the doubtful to put their trust in him for salvation. Section 3 is the Bible application. Comprehend your need to reach out to the Lord. After reading Come to Jesus in the student book, notice the following questions. What compels people to want to reach out to Jesus? Why do you believe Jesus beckons us to reach out to him? And when we do come to Jesus, why do we invariably live a new life? Some people are drawn to his teachings on forgiveness and redemption. Others to his promises and still others to his merciful and loving character. True love does not force its object to return its love. And while Jesus loves us, he will not coerce us to reach out to him. And that's why he beckons and does not demand. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in us, transforming us into the image of Christ. And we live a life entirely different from the life we lived before. Section four is our life response. And we are to reach out to Jesus with our every need. Reaching out to Jesus for his help doesn't guarantee that he will provide what we want in the way we want and when we want but it does indicate that we have placed our lives in his hands because we have our utmost faith in him as our divine shepherd. Moreover, such dependence allows him to transform our lives into a far richer and more purposeful life. The key verse of our lesson today Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 22. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Once again, we thank and praise our God for blessing us with another opportunity to share in the study of the Word of God. We thank God for you joining us today and we invite you to join us for next week's assignment. Matthew, the 14th chapter, the 22nd verse through the 33rd. We encourage you to continue your family Bible study and individual devotions at home. And happy Father's Day to our men. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we ask that you would help us that our faith in Jesus would remain vibrant and unshakable. Thank you for a loving and merciful Savior. We thank you for being our Heavenly Father who is ever watching over us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay safe and be mindful that we are the body of Christ. <laughs>